On this week's episode of Good Looking Out, we have an upcoming sneaker designer who's gonna be pitching his brand to myself, Yu Ming Wu, and shoelace designer, Tariq Baker. Then we're gonna sit down and talk some sneaker simple facts. And later, we're gonna take a question from one of our complex viewers. This is Good Looking Out. If you had five minutes to shoot your shot with the most influential people in the game, what would you do and say? That's what we're gonna find out right now. Joining me, Yu Ming Wu. Yu Ming is the founder of SneakerCon, Sneaker News, and he's the CMO of resale juggernaut Stadium Goods. We're also joined by Tariq Star Baker. Tariq Baker transformed his passion for designing accessories into a lucrative business that includes working with Rihanna on her Puma Creepers and launching his own shoelace company, Aglet Italy. So let's meet today's young entrepreneur. Hi, my name is Dami. I'm the founder and owner of Finny Shoes. Finny is about bringing uh, flexibility and creativity into footwear. You can buy one pair of shoe and wear it in multiple ways. So you can wear it with the high top laces, you can wear it with the low tops, you can wear it with the mid tops, whichever way you want to express yourself. I feel, I feel very confident about my brand because it's, it's unique, it's different from everything out there. And that's, that's one of the things I'm shooting for. I'm not just bringing anything to the market. I want people to actually love the brand. For me to be featured on this, is, it's, a, it's, it's a huge moment for me because it's giving me the pedestal where people can actually see me and people can actually see what I'm trying to do. So um, it's, it's huge for me and I'm very excited to be here. Hi. Hello. How are you guys doing? How are you doing? Good, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, good to see you. Good to be here today. My name is Dami. I'm from New York uh, and I'm really glad to be here. I want to show you guys Fini. Okay. Uh, it's something I've been working on for a long time. I started the brand when I was in college. Since then, it's been difficult trying to start up something by yourself and yeah. trying to create something that it's unique and no one has ever done that before, so it's been a long journey. What does Fini mean to you? Because in French, that means finish. It's from my grandmother's nickname. Mm -hmm. When I was coming up with a brand, I was talking to an advisor of mine and he was like, yo, just make it more personal and um, come up with something that is like really creative, but you can also relate to and doesn't mean something bad in multiple languages. So, show us your presentation. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to watch this, but it's just a commercial that I just made with my friends. Okay. It's actually pretty cool as well. Um... So the end goal is to have one pair of shoe that you can easily buy accessories for and just switch it out. I'm gonna open up the box in a second and just show you guys what I mean by accessories. So for example, this is one pair of shoe which you can wear with the laces on. So mm -hmm. it has like a sneaker feel to it now um, yeah. with the laces on. You can so just- it turns into like a boot. Right. And this is just uh, an example of how you can wear the shoe. Uh, this is just the low tops and pictures of all the accessories as well. So the packaging and how the box comes. When you purchase it, does it come like this with all those accessories? If you buy in the shoe, the shoe comes with the with three accessories. Mm -hmm. And the box is designed to have the three accessories. Now, the, this box is not showing... Um, can you set it up so uh, yeah, you make it to we can see it? Yeah. Right now it shows six. Yeah, yeah, so what I mean by three is like three for each legs, so le three for oh, left, okay. three for right. So it's six accessories, judge you right. Um, and the packaging is designed so there will be little boxes, three little boxes on the left side, three little boxes on the right side, that you, you can actually, um, they actually fit in each other. So if you take the one box from this side, it fits with the other box from it. So you start with a low top, and then you get a laceless right. boot, and then you also get a laced boot. Right. So it. what if I, I don't want the laced one, I just want the laceless. You right. know, but it's, I have already paid for the laced one. Is that a, uh, something that you have considered removing from the packaging? 
whether you can choose maybe two, so that way the cost can become a little bit better for the consumer? Yes, that's something I'm, I'm actually looking into. I understand that not everybody wants to buy every component of the shoe. But because I'm just starting off, I just have, I have to do this this way. So, um, As a presentation, it's, it's yeah. great. Yeah. It's actually a great presentation, but in terms of once you hit the market, I, I feel like I will go either with a laced version or the laceless version. I wouldn't really go with both of them. Does the front zip off as well? Yes, yeah, so it's it's part of the design, so that way you can actually slide it on easily. So you can change those as well? No, you, no, you, you, no. So you, you can't? You can't, it just so, stops right. Okay, that's interesting. So the fact that you can change everything else, but you can't change that front piece, is something maybe you might want to consider. I mean, people, it's going as far as almost being off. You know, you're already changing everything else. Maybe I want to change that color. Maybe I want the laces to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay. and not just be at the top, you know? So given more options, we're here. The first thing you have to do is let us touch the product. Sure. You own this, you love this. Why Why we haven't had it in our hand yeah, yet, I'm right? Yeah, I'm gonna pass it down to you guys, actually. Uh, that's the biggest no-no, right? You, 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 From a distance. That's the first thing you let us do is let us touch and feel it, and then we all about it, you know? I understand it's all about price point. It's feeling good. I don't know. You didn't even explain what the price point was to us. We're still guessing this price point. Like, <laughs> what would you, what would you, if you had to guess, what would the price point be? I mean, from listening to you talk, I would say you're selling a shoe for, you know, 50 bucks or, or 70, 75 bucks from which you're, where you say you're trying to make it for everyone. This is, to me, this is a $200 shoe. You're using good last and everything. You know? The price was actually 175 but because I'm still actually testing the, the product out to see how the consumer is actually going to react to it, I, I said I'm going to leave the price at $150. Not I sure. think a $150 price point is actually pretty good for this shoe. It's something to consider is zippers. You know, I don't know what I don't know what zippers you're using for this. The type of zipper you use is really important because right. certain zippers, the teeth really last for a long time. Yes. So think about those zippers that you. I know you're saying this was the prototype. Yeah, you're supposed to come <laughs> finish, man. Ready yeah. to go, man. You can, he needs you that. Finish. They, they didn't, yeah, they didn't even say anything to us about the prototype. <laughs> I'm know? telling you, they didn't give me taste. Ah, oh, come I, on. I don't want to hear that, man. The dog ate the homework, man. Come <laughs> on, yeah. man. You okay? Yeah. You sure? Yes, I'm um, not. Like he was about to cry. You know, this time. <laughs> yeah, it's this fourth point. quarter, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you some just some some feedback and just my thoughts. Okay. Um, you know, I do like the shoe. I think there is a market for it. Um, just your presentation was a little bit green. I mean, okay. I know this is probably like new to you. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I'm here, I'm presenting, but you just gotta stay ready. Okay. You know, you said you spent so much time on this, and this means so much. Just the name from you getting it from your grandma and everything else. It's just even about the way the box is displayed. Making sure you have a holder so we could see that it's sitting up. You know how even you showed us the commercial. You're like, oh, just me and my friends did this. No, mm -hmm. that commercial was great. It's, it's we put a lot of work and thought into it. It's actually a dope commercial. Um, I was just trying to be modest and just... No, this is um, your brand. You, you right. work hard on it. You yeah. don't have to come in here. And I'm not saying you gotta be braggadocious, but be confident right. when you're pitching us and you're selling us because at the end of the day, we're here to help you. Okay. And we want to maximize this opportunity for you as much as we can. Okay. I'm right with her on that one. That confidence is key. If you let people know that you own this and you feel it, people start to feel what you're putting out. And that's okay. very important. Okay. I'm giving you credit for being different. Being different is hard. You know, it's really, you're part of the 1% at that point. I actually didn't really like the shoes in the beginning, okay. uh, looking at the low top. I just said, this is a little weird. This is, you know, <laughs> something that um, you kind of, have kind of seen, and then when I saw the high top version, that's when my thoughts changed from not liking it to liking it quite a bit. You know, just looking at now how you can accessorize it, how you can it become a very versatile shoe, whether it's a summertime shoe to a winter boot. And let me ask you one last question. Where, sure. do, you, where do you see this being at? Which stores do you see it in your eyes when you look at your product? To be honest with you, I want to see in stores like Keith, Foot Locker. I don't want to compete with I, I brand. Um, because I want this to be available to everyday people. You can mm -hmm. just, I want this to be a regular shoe you can wear to, to, to a skateboard park or like if you want to go out with your friends at, at yeah. work or you want to go to work. It's um, an average Joe price point. Correct. Okay. Yeah. 
it has a high-end feel to it. Like, it feels like you was going in a high-end direction, even if you say you didn't want it to be high-end. But it, it's given that, because it doesn't feel athletic. It just feels a little bit more dressy, high-end. Okay. So even if you're saying you don't want it to be that, you can give a high-end at a clean price point. I think one of the things that you couldn't really identify was really who your real consumer is. I think that's really important as you go to market. Um, you can't just say, I think anyone can be my consumer. Um, because you're just going to spread yourself so thin as you kind of hit the market. You can't say, I'm, I need to be at Kif and Foot Locker. You have to choose one of those. Kif has a very different consumer than a Foot Locker uh, uh, buyer. Um, and as you kind of sell this to shoe buyers on the big box level to the boutique level, you really need to tell them, this is who my consumer is. Dami, I want to thank you so much for joining us and good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Oh, no Absolutely. problem. I definitely liked the shoe a lot. Mm -hmm. I felt like uh, just his presentation. I don't know if he was like nervous. Yeah, Sometimes yeah, I didn't yeah, know if he was yeah, gonna yeah. cry. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be feeling like Simon Cowell, like I'm about to crush his dreams. Yeah. I'm not used to being on camera all the time, so I might, I might be a little bit shy or timid on camera, but that doesn't mean that I'm not confident in my brand or what I'm doing. A big thing for me was he had a lot of excuses. He yeah. could have had a perfect presentation yeah. without saying anything. Yeah. Not, I, not honestly, it was good, but he created his own pothole, guys. Some of the comments were like, I'm, I wasn't prepared. It wasn't that, it was just that. The fact that the, the, the timing of the whole show, or the, the timing I was given to be prepared for this show was really short. He's in the right path. He's just that little yeah. thing that's missing. I, mean, he's, I think he's gonna yeah. get it. I think this feedback, he's gonna take that, really mm -hmm. go back and horn, horn it up and, and figure yeah. it out. I'm gonna be going back with my marketing team and working with them on how we can actually target our audience and making sure they are aware of the brand. In 2017, the athletic footwear industry generated $19.6 billion in sales in the U.S., and lifestyle sneakers contributed most of that revenue. The secondary market alone is worth over $1.5 billion, which means there is money to be made in sneakers if you know the game. So let's talk the simple facts with Yu Ming Wu and Tariq Baker. Converse is doing a lot of upcoming collabs. They have Miley Cyrus, they have Off-White. They're kind of partnering with so many different people. Like, I wouldn't think like a Vince Staples one month and then a Miley. It's the, one of the most versatile shoes out mm -hmm. there. It was made popular with a lot of the musicians mm -hmm. and it's carried on to everyday Joes. It's just easy, you know, it's simple, it's, one of the best sneaker models out there. It's a diverse shoe. I feel like, yeah. I mean, a person could put on a suit with a pair of Converse's or you could pair, put on a pair of ripped jeans. So that's, that was the first versatile sneaker I've seen. Adidas is closing some of their physical stores so they can focus more on e-commerce. What do you guys think about this? Does it feel like the malls are gonna be dying? The brick and mortars? What are, what's happening? Adidas has realized that, hey, you know what? The app is working, people are, are tuning in, we're able to get in more homes without people driving out the door. This is your world, you mean, what do you think? So I think it's interesting for Adidas to start closing some of their stores mm -hmm. um, and moving their business online. As big as their business is, um, their online business is, uh, is good. I think it needs a little bit more help. Mm -hmm. um, not help, but just being a little bit more consumer friendly. The CEO called Adidas.com the brand's most important store in the world. And as a result of its online success, the brand has plans to cut back its 2,500 stores around the world. What should savvy sneaker entrepreneurs learn from this? It's exactly um, what uh, the CEO said. Um, even at Stadium Goods, our business is 70% uh, online, yeah. where it's only 30% uh, in-store. Uh, mm -hmm. We Obviously, we still need those stores to be around to, to ensure we build trust and have someone be able to come in and try something on. But mm -hmm. you know, with online, we're able to reach a global audience. Same yeah. thing with Adidas. There's someone in a small town somewhere they know how to use their iPhone and they're shopping. They don't have to travel far no more. So. Oh, I want to be shopping at three in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now let's take a question from one of our viewers. Hi, my name is Diane Holloway. I am an interdisciplinary footwear designer and I am based in Phoenix, Arizona. If I had the opportunity to ask any veteran in the industry, my first question would be, how do you uh, stay independent versus joining a corporate company. 
she can stay independent and work with corporate, meaning yeah. she can stay independent but collaborate with corporate. Yeah. You don't have to sell it to corporate, yeah. you know? So these days, corporate is giving smaller independent brands and designers opportunity mm -hmm. to play in the market, and that's where they just stay in touch with the culture. I think staying independent is important to kind of get your passion, get your, get your product right. Mm -hmm. And at some point, to really grow and scale, you really have to then allow some investment and yeah. sell to corp a corporation or work in a corporation. Collaborating with a, uh, a big corporate is also another possibility, but it's really where you want to take your business. Do you want to stay small and independent, or do you want to be big and massive and global? Thanks for sharing your your pivotal moments, guys. Thank you for having us and having yes. me. Sure. Thank you.